good morning good evening good afternoon guys and welcome back to my channel i hope that you're having a beautiful day and you guys are staying safe and that you guys are well today i wanted to come up with some tips for all swimmers during isolation because i feel like at this point i'm kind of a pro of what not to do and what to do during a lockdown <laughs> so i thought i would share my two cents with you guys so I'm going to be covering a little bit of everything in this video. I wanted to make this as accessible as possible. So there's going to be a little bit of like cycling stuff in there. There's going to be running stuff. There's going to be cheap stuff. There's going to be stuff that you have to pay for. There's going to be a bit of everything in there today, but I've come up with as much as I can to help you guys if you're still struggling with what to do during lockdowns. Now, I think that the one thing that a lot of Scottish swimming clubs have been doing amazingly is providing Zoom workouts for their swimmers. And I 100% agree with that. I think that now is the time to be working on your weaknesses, guys. I have been working so much on my weaknesses during these lockdowns and yeah like I'm coming back with a vengeance <laughs> okay so in the first lockdown I started running a lot um I was pretty much running every day which would be my first no-no as swimmers we are used to a very minimal impact sport I mean there's pretty much no impact with swimming um, so running is a very impact sport you want to protect your joints your joints will not be used to the impact that is not me saying don't run but this is me saying don't do it every day do it every other day or at least every three days the other thing I want to say about running is as swimmers we have very mobile ankles as a runner it's not the best to have mobile ankles because you want your ankles to be pretty strong. Um, so just make sure that you are kind of stretching your ankles a lot. That's the one thing I found was that my ankles were really, really sore. And yeah, just really make sure that you're doing a lot of mobility work if you are doing a lot of running. But running is an amazing form of cardio. Now, the one thing I want to be saying to swimmers is, look, listen, Linda, <laughs> you would normally be doing at least two hours worth of training. Do you want to be replicating that on land? It depends on what form you're doing. That's one thing I would say. Now, if it was a minimal impact sport like cycling, you could easily like replicate that. You could do two hours on a bike, easy. If you were running, however, you would not be wanting to do two hours on like running every day. So just be wary of how much and how many hours you're doing compared to the pool. So yeah, if you are running, definitely be careful with the impact. Make sure your mobility is on point. Definitely pre and post pull or pre and post run, I guess. But make sure you are looking after your joints because running is brutal on your body. Um, I was doing pretty... <laughs> don't do what I did. I was doing about 10k every day for like a week and this was at the start of lockdown i was doing quite a lot of running um i didn't have my road bike at this point and so since then i've now had a very bad hip injury um i went up one of the local hills and you girls been crippled since <laughs> so yeah just be careful with running that's not me discouraging running because i think it's an amazing sport but definitely be careful about the amount of time you're running i would say for swimmers half an hour to an hour like you don't want to be pushing any more than an hour of running unless you're used to it and you do it anyway I know a lot of swimmers that do running anyway so for them an hour of running is no bother but with running you definitely need to gradually increase it so that your joints are used to it that's the one thing I would say for swimmers is look after your joints okay my next form of cardio that I would 10 out of 10 recommend and for me is probably the closest thing to swimming that you can get on land obviously swimming is a very upper body sport so maybe rowing would be more like close to swimming but who has a rowing boat cycling guys cycling is amazing it is so so close to swimming because it is minimal impact the one thing I would say is that yes it is leg dom dominant but it definitely works the same like energy system as swimming and also I think that it's just amazing because you can replicate the hours that you would spend in a pool you could do let's say you do four hours in a pool a day you could do four hours on a bike you could do two hours in the morning two hours in the afternoon but again build up gradually you wouldn't just jump into nine sessions a week in the pool so don't jump into nine sessions a week on a bike the one thing I am going to say though with cycling is stretch your neck 
okay? This probably seems really, really weird, but as swimmers, we're used to being very flat in the water. When we are, I don't know how to demonstrate this, but when we are like flat, our head is down, okay? Okay, our head is gonna be down when we're swimming like this, but on a road bike, your head is up and it is an, a neutral spine. As swimmers, we don't tend to be used to that. And when I first got my road bike, I was finding that my neck was very stiff because it just wasn't something that I thought about stretching because it's a leg sport. Why would I need to stretch my neck? But it makes total sense. You're, you're, you have to look where you're going when you're on a bike. You can't get out of that. And so if you are in a fairly aerodynamic position, you want to stretch your neck basically because for me I got a really stiff neck so that would be my two cents worth for cycling but guys I I bought my road bike after the first lockdown <laughs> people laughed at me um I have done a video on here of me getting my first road bike so it is in the cards um if you are really that interested but definitely guys cycling is amazing you don't have to get a proper road bike you could just do it on like a commute bike or a cheap bike but honestly cycling is such a good sport and it's so easy to replicate sessions in terms of like aerobic and anaerobic kind of interval training it's so easy to replicate okay my next thing is don't neglect your abs because swimming is a very ab controlled sport like your center of balance fully relies around your abdominal muscles so if you're not using them then you're gonna lose them so with running you don't use your abs as much as when you're swimming you're, when you're swimming your abs very much hold you up and flat in the water and everybody who's watching this who is a swimmer knows this already i'm just telling you stuff that you already know but Without using that, those muscles, you're not gonna be doing them. Would I say do sit-ups? No, I would say be doing holds. If you're swimming, you're not doing sit-up movements. Think about how you are moving in the water and replicate that on land. I would say planks, I would say streamlined holds, I would say dish holds, which is basically a streamlined holds just without the hands. I would say holds for your abs. Honestly, guys, doing a hold movement on your abs is the closest thing to replicating in the pool. And my next and final piece of advice is do not neglect your upper body. It is so easy to neglect your upper body, especially on land, because it is possibly the least, the last thing that people think about training. People always do squats, they always do burpees, they always do mountain climbers, they always do lunges, and these are very cardio or leg based like movements. Do not neglect your upper body. Swimming is a very upper body based sport, hence and therefore you wanna be replicating it. If you have a pull up bar, whap out the pull ups. If you don't have a pull up bar, either try and find something to replicate that off or you can get some bungee cords cheap off Amazon. I have bungee cords, I didn't bring them down to Gretna with me but that was silly and you can just replicate those movements. If you don't have bungee cords you can easily do that with resistance bands but yeah definitely do not neglect your upper body guys because when you get back in that pool oh my goodness <laughs> you want to be able to pull the water and my last and final i know i said that upper body was my last and final piece of advice was but do not neglect your mobility please i think swimmers are notorious for neglecting mobility especially younger swimmers guys i can do a video on mobility and the stretches i do as a swimmer if you would be interested in that but guys do not neglect your mobility if you are weak mobily if you if you're weak mobily if you are weak if you have weak mobility, now is the time to be working on it. Definitely make sure that you're keeping your thoracic spine nice and open, nice and movable. And yeah, definitely use this time to really work on any weaknesses you have. Comment below if you think I've missed anything. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share this video on Instagram or on Twitter or on Facebook. Share it with some swimmer friends if you have any um, and you think it might help them. I've really just wanted to share my two cents for any younger swimmers really i think older swimmers it can probably help with holding you accountable guys i have been on fire lately and my motivation dip 
dipped briefly, but the one thing I would definitely recommend is the importance of setting weekly goals. Guys, my weekly goal this week was to do a 50k bike ride. I killed it by Monday. In fact, I did two in a row. I did one on Monday, one on Tuesday. Guys, weekly goals is where it's at. But anyway, I've rambled on far too much now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Click the subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me. And have an amazing week of training. Also, let me know what your goals are this week. I would be interested to know. But anyway, have an amazing day. Bye, guys.